Yes, everyone, talking about Lori Vallow Daybell, the so-called doomsday cult mom. She has her set of beliefs, and we all can believe whatever we want in terms of, of religion. Uh, the time it becomes a problem is if those beliefs turn into actions, and those beliefs and actions somehow interfere with the life, liberty, and safety of others. And is that the case in the Lori Vallow Daybell case? Um, the people who are no longer alive, the people who are missing in this case, are they all connected to this belief system involving zombies? Ashley Banfield, newest member of the Court TV family, back with us. This, uh, you know, I don't watch, um, what is it, this is a show, it's called The Living Dead, The, the, the Walking Dead, Walking whatever dead. it is. I don't watch Walking that. Dead. I don't watch oh, any zombie it's shows. It's shot in Atlanta. But now maybe I TV? have to. Yeah. Oh. You know, it's shot in Atlanta, and the executive or the um, director of several of the episodes is my cousin, Michelle McLaren. I have to just give her the props there. So there. And my neighbor is the, the, the chief uh, director of photography for the show as well. So. Yeah, we well, should be watching it. That, and we have it on tonight. From, you can from, just watch yeah, from this New show. Jersey. Yeah. Exactly. So explain to me, we've got this list of, of alleged zombies, I guess. Uh, Tammy Daybell, Chad Daybell's wife on the list? Yes, and here's the weird part. She's not the only one. We're starting to see a lot of connections, Vinny, between all the people who are dead and missing in Lori Vallow's orbit and the fact that she and Chad thought that they'd been possessed by zombies, according to those who are starting to show up in documents, show up in interviews, etc. This whole group of five, Vinny, Tammy, Charles, Brandon, Eileen, JJ, at some point, Chad and or Lori said to someone or indicated in some way that each of these people had been become possessed by zombies. And what, why does that matter? I mean, other than it just sounds silly. To them, it isn't silly. To them and their cult-like religion, if your soul has been taken, if your body has been taken over by a zombie, your soul sort of sits out here in the uh, in the ether and is in limbo, can't go anywhere, and can only be you know ascending into heaven if that body is killed. Hmm. So now we get to the dead and missing, and let me start with Tammy because Angela Stone is a former member of this cult. And she appeared on NBC's Dateline on Friday night with Keith Morrison and explained at length that Chad thought his wife, his late wife, was... Have a listen to her. Chad believed that his wife was supposed to have died in a car accident and that she had, was now inhabited by a zombie, by an evil spirit, doesn't have control of herself. Um, by natural causes or not. She wrote something, according to Dateline, on a community Facebook page, and it said this. Something really weird just happened. A guy wearing a ski mask was suddenly standing by the back of my car with a paintball gun. He shot at me several times. Well, she was alive to be able to write it, so clearly whoever did that uh, didn't get his wish, if his wish was to free her from her zombie state. Uh, but Charles Allo also has this zombie connection. And again, let me just give it to, um, I can source this to, to NBC News and Dateline because they were able to get their hands on some text messages that Charles sent to a friend not long before he also died. He said this, something snapped, evil and scary. I am thankful she, meaning Lori, doesn't see JJ, meaning their son. She wants him and for me to disappear. Seriously, it's the freakiest thing I've ever experienced. She's with a group of people called Woke and Preparing a People. She actually believes I'm not Charles. Here's where it gets weird. She says an evil spirit named Nick Schneider murdered me and is using me to violate her. And if those text messages that Charles sent to his friend, according to Dateline, aren't enough, well, then let's just take it right from Charles's lawyer, because in his divorce filings and custody efforts against Lori Vallow, his lawyer wrote, if Charles got in the way of Lori's mission, she would murder him. That's what was written in that man's uh, divorce and, and custody battle with Lori. So that's pretty telling. Now let's move on to the third mission. Oh, go ahead. 
Yeah. Mission. Yeah, in the way of his mission. I mean, I thought some of the problems were infidelity, but apparently it's 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 a completely different picture that you're painting for me tonight with these uh, yeah. so-called zombies. You know, one of the one of the yeah. uh, zombies that you put up there was Brandon Boudreaux, but he's he's still alive. Brandon is still alive. That is a very very good observation. However, he also had kind of that same experience that that Tammy did. He had somebody that shot at him and in his 911 call he actually said paintball gun same thing that tammy said paintball gun but he is alive he was very shaken uh but what's also fascinating is that we've learned a little bit about melanie uh his ex-wife who married a new man named ian palowski and ian palowski wrote a lot of stuff down on a document that sadly for him got out to his ex-wife and then eventually into the hands of the police and dateline actually got the document and it says that Melanie stated, his wife, Ian Palowski says, Melanie stated that Brandon, her ex-husband, had been possessed by a demon. She shared the idea that Chad and Lori could have directed Al, that's Alex, that would be Lori's brother, who's now dead, to take a shot at Brandon. So yet again, this zombie-like demon possession that according to Melanie's husband, which he did not intend for anybody to see, not, certainly not us. Um, mm, Melanie and Chad and Lori think that her ex-husband is possessed by a demon. And then let's get on to the children. You know, it's interesting. This is, key. this is key. Yeah. Just, just before we get to the kids, what's interesting, the pattern I've seen here is that it's all these spouses of people who got remarried very quickly after splitting yes. up with their spouses and they just happen to be demons just just noting for the record they just they just happen to be or uh they, they might be in a custody battle that's the other thing but the, 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 the rapidity at which they got married is actually really scary because alex got married um in vegas and melanie got married in vegas i think a day or a week apart I lost track and then Lori got remarried uh chad was 17 days having put his wife in the ground not even since she died 17 days later so strange um speed and, and melanie actually addressed that on, on the dateline she said well we you know that's our religion we just do things fast <laughs> like that's gonna sit with a jury wow. that ever gets there i know crazy all right so let me take you to the children now Lee, ryan and JJ Vallow. Those are the two children of Lori's, right? They're so cute. Um, and this is just so hard because, you know, here we are talking about all these people who died, but these kids, we hope, are still alive. But the problem is that same document that Melanie's husband wrote that we weren't supposed to see, and yet Dateline got their hands on it, and a couple of other people got their hands on it, and the police apparently have their hands on it, according to NBC. In that, Ian says, my wife Melanie, and I'll just say Melanie, had been told by Chad and Lori that their children had been possessed and had become zombies. And Ian further writes, according to Dateline, that she shared concerns that may indicate Tylee and JJ needed to die. That's the hardest thing to, to read, honestly, Vinny, in those documents. Yeah, and that's the, the one fact in this case, you, you put those together, uh, that mm -hmm. makes you lose hope for JJ and yeah. Tylee, that they're not being yeah. protected, um, that they're following the same fate for the same reason based on the same set of beliefs as other people that we know are no longer alive. Right, everyone else a, was a zombie, uh, was right? At. Everyone else was a zombie and got shot at or died. Um, but guess not, guess who's not a zombie? Joseph Ryan, that's um, uh, husband number three for Lori Vallow. Daybell. Joseph Ryan um, died officially as a heart attack, uh, but this was before Lori had found this new and bizarre religion. This is before Chad Daybell had come into her life. So, so far in this story, we don't think that he's um, has a zombie issue. But I got more viewer questions, Vinny. Can you have you got your thinking cap on? Yeah. Go okay, ahead. We got for a couple. Awesome. Don Gunter on Facebook asked this. Now, it's long, but I, I, I get the gist of it, and I think it's a good question. I don't know if it's been asked, but since Tylee and JJ's fathers are dead, doesn't that mean they can collect a portion of their Social Security? And if that's the case, wouldn't the feds have justification to mandate them to physically show the children to prove they're alive and be able to collect the checks each month? And if she were to bail out, which she's not now, um, 
would that not give the feds a reason to arrest her for social security fraud? It's sort of an interesting thought. I, I'm actually not 100% sure if you can collect on your dead dad's social security, um, but th there is definitely a fraud if you're doing it, and uh, you get your dad, right? Yeah, and that's one way to look at the investigation. I'll see, was there any sort of monetary uh, advantage to the children not being alive? But again, yeah. they're not shown to be dead yet. Right now, they're just missing. Right. Um, but that is a fascinating avenue because if that was true, that would be gold for prosecutors in, in front of a courtroom because you've got to come up with ulterior reasons, which is easy with the spouse, difficult with the children. Right. Amy Blanchard on Facebook asked this, Vinny, do you think they will have to offer her a deal to get her to talk? I love that question. It's a very simple question, and you would think that it's just a, a no-brainer, but there is a lot to that, isn't there, Ben? There really is. And, and first of all, I don't think that deal happens until after July 22nd. I don't think it would happen, and I don't think it would happen until there are murder charges in this case. Uh, okay. Cases. If there are murder charges right. related to the children, related to Tammy, related to Charles, if all that's happening and all in play at once, and we are, you know, next fall, early next winter, we're sitting here. Right. The game may change. The game sure. may change, and and that may be well, the point where maybe she considers something. You can scare the bejesus out of her with all those charges, but then I think what would be even more scary to her is when July 22nd comes and goes and she's not like in heaven, you know, and she's really mad because maybe she was hoping to game reunite with someone there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she may have a big old natural epiphany, <laughs> right? Okay, Julie Hartung, by the way, Julie does a lot of comments on Facebook. I love it. Uh, she asked, what will they do if she won't confess or say where the kids are? Can they make a case against her? Vinny, this is that fantastic Absolutely. question. Yeah, that's that question. Yeah. You know, do that's we what even this case know is. if they're dead? Like, you know, so tell me, what would you do? Right. Well, you, you can make the case for desertion. You can make the case for, for the abandonment, you know, based upon what she can't produce and what she can't show. And it's a circumstantial right. case, but it's obvious that she's not taking care of the kids because she's not with them. And she is the parent yep. responsible. And they need to provide some sort of alternative um, explanation for who's taking care of the kids and why that's not desertion. So uh, they absolutely can make that case. And it may get us closer, uh, one step closer to, to figuring you know out what? what happened here. But that's not going to be satisfying, um, a desertion case. Like, you know, everybody who's watching this is so angry. No, but it gets, it gets children, her locked up. You know, for how long? It gets her locked up for a time certain. For a time certain, she will she would be sentenced for it, and it will be years. It will be years. But how, many? how many? Like, but it would be that's the problem. People right. want to see her put away forever, no parole. They call it toe tag justice, where you're parole, toe tag parole. You're paroled with a toe tag on you. That's what a lot of people are saying. If you did this to your children, that may whatever happen. fanatical belief you have, they want. But desertion's not going to give you that. Desertion's not going to.